What's up, everybody? Go Burns doing a recap of Mafia 3 at E3. A lot of information came out, and as you can tell over here in the Twitter feed, yesterday they were showing off the Mafia 3 New Bordeaux food truck, and it looks pretty cool. So you can get Gator Bites and some Jambalaya from the food truck as well. By the way, most of the information we're going to go over can be found on either the Mafia 3 Twitter page or over at the Mafia 3 Facebook page. Either or. A lot of information came out over the past few days regarding Mafia 3. And we're going to go over hopefully all of it right now, but chances are I will miss something. And if there's anything I miss regarding Mafia 3, which by the way is coming out in October, on October 7th to Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC, be sure and include it below in the comment section. So the first thing that happened was Sunday, they unveiled the official Mafia 3 E3 trailer. Then there was a 20 minute world premiere video showing in-game demo regarding Mafia 3. All that happened Sunday night at E3 courtesy of IGN Live. And it's at the official Mafia YouTube channel, which I also have linked below in the description section. So I got the Mafia YouTube channel, the Twitter page, and the Facebook page, all of which for you to go check out. So that's a lot of information that we went over the past few days already. I broke down the teaser trailer, the trailer, and of course we went over the world premiere for Mafia 3 at E3, and of course some important characters that were revealed over the weekend was Father James. We now know his name, the priest that saved Lincoln from being killed by the Italian mob whenever, you know, Sammy's was burning down. That's his name. And of course, Kenny Maguire, who is the FBI agent that is investigating what's happening regarding the war that Lincoln Clay has waged on Sal Marcano. And of course, his friend Donovan, who uh, Lincoln Clay met, I believe, in Vietnam, who is now a CIA agent, or he was a CIA agent back in 1968. He's obviously helping Lincoln Clay throughout Mafia 3. And of course, one of Sal Marcano's brothers, because I believe that Sal's going to end up having two brothers in Mafia 3, one of which is Lou Marcano, who is the capo for Sal Marcano in the French ward. There's also gators confirmed lurking about in the bayou, not exactly good news for you, but good news for anyone you wish to feed the gators to. <laughs> you're also going to be able to swim in Mafia 3, and you're going to be able to use boats in Mafia 3 as well, which makes complete sense because New Bordeaux is based off real-life New Orleans. And New Orleans, as I've pointed out a few times, is surrounded by a lot of water. So you kind of need a boat to travel around some of you know, the areas in New Bordeaux and the Bayou. A lot of other things that went over in the um, this past week in E3 concerning Mafia 3 is uh, various uh, combat techniques. You can go in guns blazing. You can go in uh, stalking stealth-wise. You can switch it up to your heart's content. There's also going to be various takedowns you can do, like standard takedowns, then even more brutal takedowns on your foes. And if we look at the bottom left-hand corner, this is something that was answered in one of the Q&A videos that is up on both the Mafia 3 Twitter and Facebook pages. And this is an interesting question I had as well regarding you know the bottom left-hand corner of the screen regarding the Mafia 3 gameplay. Over on the right, it's pretty obvious. There's a mini-map, and then the green bar is Lincoln Clay's health. But what is the left bars and information all about? Well, first off, uh, you have access to two weapons. Usually one is a pistol. Another is either like a shotgun, uh, assault rifle, a sniper rifle, etc. But there's some other things as well. Like the, the plus sign is adrenaline shots for Lincoln. So if you get injured and you need to get your health back up quickly, you just take one of your adrenaline shots but you're also able to carry uh, grenades, explosives. So another thing you'll be able to carry along with the grenades and explosives is some sort of distraction device, which is going to be some sort of voodoo thing or a voodoo doll created by Cassandra. 
And Hayden Blackman, the studio head for Anger 13, mentioned this, that you know the Italian mob is very superstitious, and Lincoln and Cassandra are going to use that against them with this voodoo doll that, can, that Lincoln can use as some sort of distraction to either scare them or you know, get them to wander off a little bit in order for him to sneak by them or you know, get the drop on them. And then, of course, some other icons that we'll go over is the uh, wallet icon. And this is money that's currently in Lincoln's pocket that he has yet to put away. And the other icon is his safe so eventually in between missions you might want to go back to your safe and put away any money you earned during the mission so that might be a good idea plus there's also going to be various collectibles like the playboy magazines which are making a return from mafia 2. hayden blackman also mentioned the involvement of check 2k which was very much involved in the creation of mafia 2. once again they're part of the team for mafia 3 along with Hangar 13. So it's technically two development houses under Take 2 that's making Mafia 3. Hangar 13 as well as Check 2. So some people were concerned about that, but to put any concern to rest, yes, Check 2K is most definitely involved in the creation of Mafia 3 along with Hangar 13. Now, one thing that we already know about is the fact that there are going to be 10 districts on the map. One of them is, of course, the bayou to the south of the city of New Bordeaux. But a few of the districts I'll mention are, of course, the French Ward, where a lot of fun happens. That's also the district that Lou Marcano has control over. That's the region where he's capo of. Then, of course, you got the downtown area. You got uh, Delray, which is where Sammy Robinson and the Black Mob reside. And that's kind of the starting place for Lincoln Clay. That's like your safe area because... The uh, cops don't exactly patrol Delray as much as er other areas throughout the map. So if you get into trouble in Delray, you're least likely to you know, generate any attention from the police, as opposed to like the, the high-class area, which is very heavily white, Frisco Fields. This is where the money is, and you're going to get more attention in Frisco Fields just by even walking around as Lincoln Clay than you would in Delray. So if you commit crimes in Frisco Fields, there's a much higher chance you're gonna get a police response in Frisco Fields as opposed to Delray or the Bayou. Now, one of the factors revolved around Frisco Fields is this alliance between Sal Marcano and the Southern Union. Now, the Southern Union is another faction that was introduced over the past weekend at E3 and this is the white supremacist KKK-like organization. And one of the things that they're doing is apparently they're using the university in Frisco Fields, which is, I think, under construction, as a front for making PCP for the mob. So, yeah, the mob you know, doing a lot of shady stuff, obviously, because they're a criminal organization, including making PCP with the Southern Union. Now, regarding police, according to Hayden Blackman, they are no joke in this game. You can't exactly stand your ground against the cops. If you commit a crime, you know, citizens will go after a payphone. They're going to try and find the nearest payphone, and they're going to call the cops on you. And if you don't get to them, if you don't stop them, then they're going to call the police, and the police are going to come into the area search, locate, and if they find you, they're going to pursue you, they're going to chase you, and the ultimate goal is to kill you. Now, they could already be in the area when you commit a crime, so that's already going to cause trouble for you. However, if you give some territory to Burke, one of your three lieutenants, he has connections with the police and with a dispatcher. He's able to prevent phone calls from going through. So if someone calls the cops on you, and if you have you know enough territory over with Burke and he has enough you know wheels grease with the fuzz, you know, it's gonna make it a lot more difficult for the police to, you know, find out about the crimes being committed in various districts. And there's also apparently a way for them to end up looking the other way, thanks to a little help from Burke. Now, the three lieutenants that will be under Lincoln Clay include Burke, who is head of the Irish, Cassandra over the Haitians, and Vito who is head of the Rebel Italians. The atmosphere around Mafia 3 is obviously set in the late 60s, 1968 specifically, 
In other words, it's very heavily influenced by everything going on in that time period, like the 60s music, muscle cars, the Vietnam War, civil rights, racism. Of course, you know, the Mafia 3 inspiration comes from a lot of things as well, like uh, the city of New Orleans itself, which is what New Bordeaux is based on, several uh, Mafia-type films, including, as Hayden Blackman stated, the uh, second half of Goodfellas, and, of course, the documentary Cocaine Cowboys. Now, what Hayden Blackman considers Mafia 3 is the erosion of the golden age of the mob, whereas in uh, Mafia 2, it was more like the golden age and the first half of Goodfellas. So that's the difference between Mafia 2 and Mafia 3 over the past 17-year time frame between the two games. And there are two characters, obviously, that make appearances from Mafia 2. We already mentioned Vito, who's one of Lincoln's lieutenants. But another character, Leo, who was under Frank Vinci in Mafia 2, one of the crime bosses back in Empire Bay. He is the commission head in Mafia 3. And following the events of Mafia 2, he sent Vito into exile for his own protection down to New Bordeaux under Sal Marcano. Now, over the past 17 years, if you go by the postcards that I've been covering over the past few months, things are not exactly good between Sal Marcano and Vito. Vito has been getting sidelined, you know, passed up on opportunities, and there's this apparent big heist that the Marcano crime family is working on in conjunction with others. And ultimately, it leads towards Sal Marcano betraying and killing the black mob, including Sammy Robinson, his son Ellis, and leaving Lincoln Clay for dead. But the result is Lincoln Clay survives. He's rescued by Father James. Ultimately, he recruits Vito, Burke, and Cassandra as his underbosses. And that ties into the sit-downs, which we got a lot of information about in the 20-minute world premiere. We really got a better idea how the sit-downs work. So after each territory Lincoln Clay takes over, he has a sit-down with his three underbosses, and they each offer him something in return for giving that territory to them. Now, this is where the replayability comes in, because you can try and balance it out and try to keep all three of your lieutenants happy by divvying up the territories, the districts as evenly as you can, or you can play favorites. You can start, you know, sidelining Burke or uh, Cassandra or Vito, and eventually you're going to get like a warning from the lieutenant that you haven't given as much territory to that, hey, you better give me something or there's going to be consequences. But if you don't listen to them, they're going to betray you. They're going to rebel and they're going to be a problem for you in the game when you're driving around doing missions in New Bordeaux unless you go and take them out. So like in the 20 minute video, he was shortchanging Burke. So ultimately Burke turned on Lincoln and Lincoln had no choice but to go put Burke down. The same thing can happen with Vito or Cassandra or you can, like I said, try and balance it out by keeping all three of your lieutenants happy. So that's where the replayability in this game is going to factor because you can play it through one through, make everybody happy, play it again and just make Vito the one guy or Cassandra, Burke, etc. So that's going to be very fun to play with when it comes to, you know, playing Mafia 3 over and over again. And like I said, with each, you know, like um, lieutenant, they offer you different perks. So it's like three different skill trees and you can either bounce it out or you can like go after like an offer that you can't refuse. Say Burke offers you something you just can't pass up. You have no choice but to give it to him because the other two aren't exactly offering you something that's you know appealing enough to pick them over Burke or vice versa. So some of the other things that we learned in uh, the Q&As and throughout the week at E3 is the story link of Mafia 3, which is going to be a nine month period in 1968. So that's the timeline over nine months in 1968, I guess, starting when Lincoln returns home from Vietnam to the betrayal by the Marcano crime family, leaving Lincoln from dead. And of course, Lincoln eventually plotting his revenge against Sal Marcano. And where that plays out, it's going to be a nine month period. Now, there's going to be certain vehicle upgrades in the game. For example, Lincoln will have a fleet of cars at his disposal, including the kickback pre-orders. If you pre-order the uh, game, 
You get access to three weapons and, of course, three cars as well, which will be added to Lincoln Clay's fleet of automobiles, which you'll be able to upgrade, like I mentioned, uh, tires, engines, cosmetic changes, as well as other unlocks as well. And there is going to be other ways that you can help out your lieutenants, like with uh, side quests, side missions. Like a, an example that was pointed out was you'll be able to do weed running for Cassandra. So it's probably going to be in your best interest to not only award each of your uh, lieutenants territory, but to help them out whenever they need your assistance. Like whether it's uh, running weapons, drugs, etc. for Cassandra, Vito, or Burke. Another thing that we uh, found out about was cage fighting. Now, we don't know if cage fighting is just going to be one specific mission. It might be, but then again, that might be some side action that you can do as Lincoln Clay in order to earn more money and beat the crap out of people, which is always fun. Another thing that I mentioned already is the return of the Playboy magazines as collectibles that was quite popular in Mafia 2 and makes its return for Mafia 3. Another interesting thing that is not returning from Mafia 1 or 2 is gasoline. Now, if you never played Mafia 1 or 2, here's one of the things that happened in Mafia 1 or 2. You could run out of gasoline in your cars. You had to go to a gas station and refill your automobiles. That will no longer be the case in Mafia 3, so you won't have to worry about gas when it comes to driving around your sweet-ass muscle cars throughout New Bordeaux, unlike in previous installments of the Mafia series. Also, another thing, no co-op mode. There's going to be no co-op in Mafia 3. It's going to focus solely on single play. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be multiplayer or like a Mafia Online. I noticed one thing when that question was brought up, the uh, development team didn't answer it. They didn't answer it one way or the other because several people were asking about multiplayer, and I'm pretty sure that if that was a big yes or a big no one way or the other, that would have been answered in the, one of the Q&As that I watched, but they kind of brushed that one aside. So while there's not going to be co-op in story mode, it's only going to be single player, I don't know what the deal is going to be regarding multiplayer because, you know, a lot of games are into, you know, MMOs and multiplaying online, and it's very possible that we may see the same thing transpire for Mafia 3. Like, you'll have Mafia 3 story, then you might even have a Mafia online. But that's just speculation on my part based on the fact that the developers didn't really try to answer that question one way or the other. Then, of course, the other one that was brought up was the clothing issue concern in Lincoln Clay. Now, it will change throughout the game as the story progresses, but as of right now, according to one of the developers, you will not have any customization regarding the clothing for Lincoln Clay, which kind of sucks because I was wanting to see if we could get different looks for uh, Lincoln Clay. You could do that for Vito in Mafia 2, but apparently that may not be the case for Lincoln Clay in Mafia 3, but there's some sort of reasoning in the story for why that is a factor. So as of right now, no clothing customization for Lincoln Clay, but his clothing will change throughout the story. And the final thing that was brought up concerned the weather in Mafia 3, which I found very interesting. It's going to be set at a day-night cycle, so there'll be daytime, nighttime. There'll be a, a clock that exists in the game. There'll also be other weather, like there'll be sunny days, there'll be cloudy days, there'll be rain. And they also touched up on the possibility of hurricane weather down in the bayou so you may have the you know wind blowing really hard you know swaying the trees back and forth so it's gonna be very interesting to see how the weather factors into mafia 3 will it be something that's organic or it will be based on where you are in the story or what you're having to do in the story i guess we'll find out when mafia 3 comes out on october 7th to xbox one playstation 4 and pc